Frosted Friends. This is Sylvia with Running With Needles and Scissors. Um, it is Sunday the 27th, I think. I've been off of work, so who knows? Uh, anyways, um, this is a floss tube or a video about stitching this time. Pretty much, that's it. Okay, well, I just wanted to thank you everybody so so very much for your response um to <laughs> i'm sorry my husband's coming he was trying to fix my uh one of things and i just heard heard something fall you'll you'll get it later um anyways um thank you so much for the response to my releases uh it just has been overwhelmingly wonderful um i have been super busy with thank you honey super busy with um, finishing up the kits, sending them out. Um, it's been it's been crazy. Thank you so much to all of those who have shouted me out, including uh, Brenda and Laura, uh, Rachel from Needle and Flax. Um, there's somebody that posted a finished one on one of the Facebook groups. I think it was in Homespun Needlework, um, whose name I don't have permission to use, but she finished it and posted it and it was so darling. Uh, when I say it, it was the kit. Anyways, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, that's not really what I wanted to start off with. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, let's see, I said I was going to do a giveaway and let me get that out of the way. Um, so I've run the, let me see if it's still up, I hope so. Yes, I've run the random um, comment picker. It was for, Oh my gosh, it's buried. Um, it truly is buried. Let's see if I can get it. I know it's down here. Ooh. Okay, so it was for the Punch Needle Emperor of a Stitcher Fall Edition. Um, and it's still fall, so we're good. But there are so many cute little projects in there that really isn't what I wanted to do. And so I thought it'd be nice to give it away. And I think. I uh, pronounce her Fairy Rose, Fairy Rose or Rose. Anyways, um, she wrote, uh, have fun on your trip. I think the fall is a wonderful time to travel since the trees are all changing colors. Very nice and true. Okay, Fairy Rose, I haven't put a comment on your comment yet, but I will. So that we're finished there. Um, yes, the so last time we talked, I was about to jump back on a plane to the Netherlands. Um, that was a week-long meeting, very interesting. Um, got to meet um, colleagues from, oh my gosh, where were they all from? Some came from Asia, some from Africa. We had locals that meant the Netherlands. Um, I came in from the States. Um, do we have anything else? Well, yeah, some from the Middle East. Um, and it was a it was a really good conference. Long hours though, and um, didn't you know we didn't leave the the conference center at all. I mean, I went for a walk a couple times uh, when time allowed. Um, the first day I got there though, that was Monday. Um, they had a trip, so there was a, a planned outing to go to Amsterdam, and I landed in Amsterdam, and had everything worked out, I would have gotten to the facility been able to drop my luggage and turn around and go on the outing with them. But things were so chaotic and such a mess in the train st system that uh, trains were being canceled and were, were running late and then trains didn't go to where they said they were going to go. And so it took me, oh my gosh, four and a half hours to get to the conference center. Um, and so that, yeah, four and a half hours to get to the conference center. And they had already left by that time. So I was on my own. The conference center was complete. It was a Christian, like a Christian retreat center. It was completely empty. Um, so I had to go into town to get something to eat. And it was fine. It was just a little walk. And um, so I just walked around that little town of Dorn, D-O-O-R-N-E. Um, I took some pictures. One of the really nice things that I find so lovely in the Netherlands is that um, for the most part, the houses don't put curtains or don't cover the windows on their ground floor, especially their living room, because it's a pride 
um, or it's, it's one of their pride to show off how beautiful their living rooms is. So, you know, you are actually sort of encouraged to look into the, I mean, not, don't press your face against the window, but to look in and, um, boy, that is totally up my alley. Uh, I love looking into, into other people's homes uh, from the outside. Anyway, so I walked around and, and looked in homes and, and admired everybody's beautiful uh, living rooms and uh, grabbed some lunch. Nothing, nothing particular, you know, like nothing very Dutch either. Um, I really actually don't really know what Dutch was typical Dutch. I mean, outside of eel or, or seafood, um, and eel is delicious. Uh, they have this thing for breakfast called... <laughs> We call it slag. I'm sure it's not pronounced that way, um, and it sounds horrible. But it's it's like the um, like the little candy coated sprinkles, and they sprinkle it on their bread. Um, never never got it. Nutella, yes. Slag on my bread now, on my breakfast bread. Anyway, so and then let's see, I left Saturday. So I came in that Monday, left on Saturday to fly back home. We They had put us up by the airport because um, the Amsterdam airport, Schiphol, is, is huge. And they were having issues. Uh, have had all summer long with long, long, long security lines and luggage, you know, never making it on the plane, even though you got there plenty early. So those of us who were leaving in the morning, they wanted us there on time. And, you know, we couldn't count on another train disaster. So we spent the night at the airport. There were four of us, I think. And um, I got there oh, three and a half hours before my flight. And um, it, it was all okay. okay. I mean, it was, that place is so huge. And, and hold on, a doggy wants to get off the couch and she has an injured leg. Oh, this one, her dad played a little too hard and rough with her and broke her. She, um, might have an ACL, well, definitely, or most likely has ACL uh, injury. And uh, we were at the vet with her and, and we don't know if it's torn completely, partially, whatever, but um, she's been a three-legged dog. She doesn't like to put her foot down. So we're trying two weeks of medication and if that doesn't work, and we're almost at the end, and it hasn't really helped. Uh, so the next thing is um, we have to put her under and she has to have an x-ray. Um, so she will walk on it a little bit when she's walking, but the minute she picks up speed, it's a three-legged hoppity hop. So, um, anyways, back to this. Yeah. Okay. So ship all is super huge. Um, masses of people going through. It's crazy, but it all went smooth. I got on my flight. There she goes. And, um, it was actually the whole back and forth, back and forth, went off without a hitch. Everything arrived, my luggage was always there. Planes pretty much ran on time. Um, when I got to the Dayton airport, now I gotta love the Dayton airport. Oh my gosh, it's a little airport. When I got there on Sunday, the day I left, there was nobody there. I mean, there was nobody at the, at the counter, so I just walked up, dropped my luggage. There was nobody at security. I was the only one going through, it was great, you know, so. Um, I got there an hour prior to my flight. Um, I'm sorry, she's crying. What is it? Oh, hold on. I've got to open the door for her so she can go and find her, her dad. Just a second. No, you're not going outside. You're going out this way. Go. There you go. All right. Oh, she spent all day yesterday outside with, with her one and only and um, doing yard work and came back limping really badly. Uh, it was a bad idea. But anyway, she just loves being with her dad. And right next, oh no, she's coming around. <laughs> she's such a pain. No, no. She will not stop whining. Go find your daddy, go find dad. That's the dachshund, she is so stubborn. And right here, right next to me is my Love of my heart, Mia, in her little sweater. Um, I don't want to talk about her. She's. I'll talk about her issues at some point or another. It's gonna make me cry. Okay. 
anyways, um, so everything went off without a hitch. I came back and four days later, we jumped in the car and drove down to Texas. We did that overnight um, because I, I really wanted to try it. The driving is easier. There's not, not so many trucks on the road. Staying awake is a whole different issue. Um, I think if I'd gotten a little bit more sleep, like I was just trying to take a nap uh, during the day, if I'd really managed to sleep a couple hours, it would have been easier. But it was a struggle staying awake, so I eventually just pulled over and, and snoozed for two hours and then went on. But the dogs were great because they just sleep through the night. You know, you have to let them out sometime in the morning hours, um, and then they snooze again, and by the time they wake up, you're in Texas. So uh, that, that went really, really well. But that meant also that I had an hour time change back. I was doing a lot of time changes, you know, an hour backwards. And then we were there for the fallback. So that was another hour backwards. And then when we came back over here, it was an hour forward. So <laughs> I was just like somebody just, ah, turn me off. Um, we went down there for a wedding. It was really fun. It was one of our son's, younger son's friends who got married. It was just a, a sweet, lovely, small wedding. Um, I got to dance with my boy, um, which, you know, it just makes me contemplate that um, five years ago, you know, he almost got killed and um, by a drunk driver who hit him at about 50 miles per hour in his driver's side door. And they didn't even think they were gonna get him out of the car alive. Um, you know, he had a significant brain injury and many other injuries that were quite bad. Um, so just to be there, ooh, sorry about the ding dong. Uh, <laughs> but just to be there with him and to be able to dance with him was, was just, yeah, it was, it was very, very, very special. Um, yeah, and then we came back and had another week's worth of work. Uh, and then I've taken some time off. So um, I'll go back in a week and a half, I think. Um, so there's a lot of stuff I needed to get done for for the stitching, uh, you know, with the market and etc. Um, a couple things that I've got cooking. So I really just wanted to focus. It's been semi-successful. <laughs> focus is hard. So, but all right, let's get going on, on some of it. Let me show you some of my, let's start with some finished stitching. Um, something you guys have not seen yet. Maybe it won't fall out of the frame. So this is Jeanette Douglas's winter. I have gotten spring, summer, and winter done. Not the fall, because even though I love the season, evidently I love stitching fall least of all. Um, this is the only one, no, the fall one is the only one I don't have the thread pack for, which is probably also a reason it hasn't gotten done yet. But I've just put this in here and easy to switch out and put the other seasons in, which I had didn't do at all, all year long. <laughs> Winter just stayed in there. This is a frame by Lane. So Lane, the people that make ch chests and furniture, I found it at a thrift shop, grabbed it, and it is just perfect for that. Uh, my summer uh, or spring, I forget which one, and this pattern I sent to a very, very, very patient watcher in Canada. Her name is Sharon. I hope I got that right. And she had to wait a little over a year for me to send, send off this giveaway. Um, you know, at first I couldn't find it, then I finally found it, and then it sat down in my craft room, and then I finally brought it upstairs, and then I finally got it in a package. And getting a label done for me was just, ugh. Anyway, so it's there, she got it. I'm done. Yay. Okay. There's that. I know you guys have seen this one before. My little winter um, stitch. Threadwork primitives. Oh gosh, I gave away the, the thing a long time ago. Anyways, this came as a full kit. My dog is over here complaining. Let's see if she'll stop. Probably not. Um, and the the linen or the, the fabric is is Osnaburg or something like that? I don't know how to pronounce it. 
but it was rather hard to stitch on but it's done and I like it so this is coming out I've got our little long-legged bird from heart and hand uh, Christmas bird this was not stitched by me but given to me Aww. there's a whole series of them I have a few of them that I still want to do then also not stitched by me but given to me is winter row by bent creek oh it's hard to it's got um ground walnut shells in it let's see if Aww. we can stretch it there you go i have a conversion to do it on blue fabric again this was given to me uh, and i do love it really super sweet Aww. i think it's on 40 count and my two santas i thought i'd pull them out i've got the third one done i showed it to you earlier this is birds of the feather here's oh let's do there we go. Red Santa. Ooh. And this one I stitched first. The green Santa because, you know, pretzel. German. Anyways, I thought he should be holding a good foamy mug of beer or blue vine or something like that. So here are the two. This is the material on the back. And eventually I have one more to go and then there'll be four. And uh, I'll be super happy to have that done. Um fabric 35 count I believe it's 35 count cocoa from Weeks Dye Works could be 35 count could be 40 I can't tell uh, it looks more like 40 to me actually anyways oh I just love them and the other thing I finished so every time I went on <laughs> on a jaunt on a globetrot jaunt even down to Texas Whatever project I was planning to work on, I would forget the floss. It happened three times. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, so on my trip to and from the Netherlands, I stitched these. And they're Lindy Minis. Ah, so cute. The little mouse. It's called Before the Ball from Lindy Stitches. Found this at Keepsakes. I was like, yes, please. And immediately had an idea. And so here, if you wonder, what's the anchor for? Well, anyways, here are my sweet little mice and an anchor. Um, oh. So I know I think only one of my friends um, watches my floss too regularly, so she'll know, but hopefully the others won't. Um, we're having a little pajama and loungewear stitch, stitch away coming up next weekend, long weekend, up in Pittsburgh, New York for um, Hobby House and Hobby House has agreed to let us come and stitch in their shop privately in our jammies <laughs> on Saturday. It'll be so much fun. Um, anyways, so these will be needle minders. I'll finish them with the buttons and because we have Robert, my good friend Robert coming along um, and he's a naval guy, he's not getting a mouse, he's getting an anchor. So there's that. And after we're done here, I'm heading down to finish these into little needle minder buttons. Okay, so that, that was that. The rest of my stitching, of course, is market related and I can't show it just yet. Um, but market is coming up so fast, so stay tuned. Um, I think you'll like what I'm going to do. Let's talk about stash. Um, yeah, and then we'll do what's in the bag. So stash, a little bit of, um, stashing, you know, I find it hard these days to, to buy stuff. I want to, but I'm sort of, you know, frustrated because I don't get to work on it. I can't start, I mean, I could start it, but why? Um, you know, I am just diligently working on my own stuff and because I'm not such a great fast stitcher. It takes me a while and I've just realized that, oh, I got focus. I've got to get this done. I don't want to be in, you know, crazy mode right before market. Uh, it'll be crazy enough as it is, but I want to be well under control with the patterns and projects I'm putting out um, because I also have a full-time job. So um, yeah, that makes my time really, really tight. Um, and so I don't want to live in that kind of stress when I Put out the other two patterns here 
um, I was leaving for my first two patterns. I went, I was leaving for, um, Germany and the patterns needed to be get done. And, and I sort of had them, you know, I charted everything, but there was so much more, um, to a pattern than just getting the chart done. And, and um, I, there's a very funny video by Lindy Stitches. If you go on Instagram and you scroll back and, um, She's, she's so funny. All her videos are pretty funny, so I would, uh, they're worth watching. Um, and yes, I am signed up for the Jingle Ball, uh, even though I'm gone with my friends, but I'll peek in and see what's going on. Oh, okay, she's just rolling on the, on the, on the carpet. <laughs> Sorry about all the, all the uh, background mm -hmm. noise. noise. Um, I wish she would go find her at. Anyway, so I have loved this sampler the minute I saw it. Yeah. Uh, by Quaint Rose Needle Arts. Um, I know Jean stitched it in Teeny Weeny. A couple other people have finished it. It is, uh, which means Tetelestai Stai. It is finished. John 1930. And it is the fulfillment of the promise for sure that we were given. So I do want to stitch that. When? I don't know. I've been hankering for this one from The Wishing Thorn. That is, these are all downloaded and printed. Um, Jane Parson, 1841. And I watched, um, oh, Scraps, and then and Scraps. Um, Diary of a Sampler Lover, I think, um, and her name completely escapes me. I can't believe it. You know, five minutes ago it was there, now it's gone. Um, she stitched the model in wool. It looks so beautiful. I decided, well, if I, whenever I start this or stitch it, there is a really good needlework, needle point shop, not five, six minutes away from me. Um, she's got some interesting silks there that we don't tend to use, but would work really well on, on, um, for stitching. And so I'm going to see what they have and maybe put it together that way, or I'll do my favorite fallback and do it in hand dyed fibers. Um, I also downloaded, yep. The mysterious M sampler from the 1800s. It's really sweet. It's little, that gives me hope. Well, maybe I can squeeze it in. I do like all the satin stitching here and there's some satin stitching right there. I did last November, so it's been a while, um, download her Anne McFarland sampler, which is just such, I fell in love with it, such a neat sampler. And I was all ready to start, but and I had ordered some fabric from uh, kitten stitcher and when I unfolded it right there there was a fault in it so I had to send it back and I didn't start um, and then I changed everything that I was going to do so ooh, uh, I am I got a piece of fabric oh I don't know which one it is but it's it might have been one of my fabric clubs I don't know there's no label on it hmm it might be, I don't know, possibly also a lakeside. I don't know. It's it's showing gray, but it has a little bit more green tint on it. And the floss that I wanted to use for this, and this is not in a bag, it's just in a file folder. Because, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh! Floss is gone. It is not in here. Oh no, there it is. It is the Gloriana um, Havana Brown? I love Havana Brown. There is something about that dark, that brown, and the blue together. Anyways, that was just my try. When you saw, oh no, what I was doing here was doing the little four-sided stitch, and these are two little eyelets. I was just trying to see how they turn out, and it is a 46 count. 
This one, you can't get it on a 40 count uh, fat quarter. So I upped it to 46 count and I think it's going to be absolutely stunning when I'm done. There is one more color in it. I'll deal with it when I get to it. It's just a teeny tiny bit. Anyways, I've got four Gloriana's. I hope it's enough. We'll see. I'll be old by the time I start this. I mean old. Okay. I showed you this a couple of videos ago when I was down at Keepsakes. I picked up this little box and I threw this conversion. I swear now, she's sitting in front of the door that is closed, but she could go around. She's crying back there and she could go around and go out that way, but you know. Oh, hello. Do you want to come up here and settle down? She'll let me know in a minute. I didn't have the pattern. So they have, at Keepsakes, they have a beautiful, beautiful conversion of Peace House. There we go. By Lottie Da. And when I was there, they had gotten a really wonderful shipment of seraphim. Those are seraphim, yep. And this is Lugana 28 count dragon dust. And these are the colors. Ah, it's gonna look so good. Over one. Teeny tiny, just like I like it. There you go. I may have to just put a few stitches into this just to get color on it, just to see. But then again, I get all this guilt about I need to be working on my on my stuff. Um, she had all kinds of sizes of this, of these little measuring box. She had a divided one. Um, really pretty reasonably priced. Love it. Love it. Love it. I want her to make me one, or whoever she gets them from, I asked her and said they could do it in any size. And I may have talked about this already, but here we go again. Um, that the, the guy can make it any size, and I want it, I shouldn't even start talking about it because I can't even remember the name. Hannah's work, Hannah and her work from Scarlet House. Um, it was in that... Um, galvanized tray that you can't get anymore. And I wasn't paying attention because I was over in Europe and missed out completely and you can't find it. So I might have them make me a ruler box to order and do it in there when I'm old. Okay, what else? Here, you've seen it. I know lots of floss tubers have shown it. The Club from Country Sampler, Mary Hill, 1854, Needlework Press. I love it. It's just so unusual, so cool. Um, here is are the flosses. There we go. And hiding underneath is the um, Steinbeck from Needle and Flax Linen, 40 counts. Right? Yeah, 40 count. That's what I get. I got some. Shocker linen from Fox and Rabbit. I'm I'm part of their Patreon, so they sent two pieces. He had the choice, getting two pieces of linen or a piece of linen and a project bag. And since I make my own project bag mostly, um, I opted for the two pieces of linen every quarter. So that's eight pieces of linen. Yoo hoo! Okay, so this is forty count hog bristle and 40 count white clay. And these are fat quarters. And yes, their linen is really, really beautiful. Let's unfold this a little bit. So I don't know if you can see the modeling. It's really subtle on this. This this 40 count white clay is, is quite good. Then they have, I think a mustard one, something. It's a gray beige. Then, during, they were coming to the States, this was in August, Fox and Rabbit that is, and they were doing, that dyed some linen they had left over. So as a Patreon patron, they, they gave us first access to buying the linen. And I had 
they were coming in full yards. And so I picked up a 46 count seaweed. Oh, look how thick it is. <laughs> I don't need a full yard. I'm going to cut it into a half yard and, and probably list the other half yard on my website unless somebody in the comments raises their hand real quick and asks for it. So here's 46 count seaweed. That's going to half a fat hat is becoming available and 40 count ballet slipper and a fat half is going to be available with that as well because I don't need a full yard. Uh, but that's the only way you could buy it, so that's how it, that's how I got it. Then, during one of my, um, down in Texas, I have a good friend who we go thrifting together, and um, we have a couple of Goodwill stores, I'm sorry about the crying down there, uh, we have a couple of Goodwill stores that we like to hit. And so in one of them, I found this frame. Anyways, and immediately I was like, oh, I know what I can use it with. It's got this plastic in there. I'm not going to leave that in there. But a long time ago, from a friend of mine, Sandy, I had picked up this kit. Carriage House Samplings, Mr. and Mrs. Abbott and Daughter. So they're looking at, all, they're looking at each other. It's a full kit. You could finish it into cushions, but I am going to, oh, can I see? I am going to put it in these frames and we'll be looking at each other. And yes, I already measured and it's perfect. So, in my old age. Love it. Um, let's do, oh yeah, there's a little, one more thing back in here. A couple more things actually. Ooh, ooh, oh, move. Hold on. There we go. I know life is hard. She's in there crying. I have subscribed to the automatic for hand dyed fibers. I think it's a really good deal. You get you can subscribe for solids, solid of the month. And these colors, there is um, Steely's, Willow Withies, and Oil of Amber are colors you use all the time when you look at the DMC equivalents. So that was a good one. And then she has the over dyed or the variegated. Um, let me take them out of the, but you can see. So, and I just said, rather than trying to remember every month to tell her, yes, I want both, I just said, put them on auto, and that's how they, that's how they ship out. Um, and as you already know, I love working with them. All right, let's do a quick update on the, the kits and the sampler that I released, and then I'll do what's in the bag. Um, so. I have, so the sampler, which you can see behind me here with a little bit of glare, I'm not gonna touch it cause it's gonna fall over to the back. And my husband is so funny. So he he went to TJ Maxx and he came home with a couple of things. <laughs> it's getting into the act anyway. So I've got my on air sign and it's on. Um, it's funny because I'm like, that's funny having it right here because actually where I need it is by the front door or back door where he comes in. <laughs> so he knows. Uh, or, you know, maybe the dog can read on air and, and stop and stop crying. But let me hold up the, so Janet Scott, 1857, um, comes as a booklet or a download. I have five more silk packs left. They come like this. These are the colors, as you can see. Um, and I think after those silk packs are out, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not going to restock, but for right now, I'm not going to restock. That's it. So here you can see the antique. But the, um, there is a DMC equivalent in here. So I really encourage you to do your own thing. 
Um, where is it? Boop, boop, boop. Let's see if I can try not to show. There we go. So we have the DMC equivalent here. You can just um, pick your, your favorite greens and do it. There's three greens, one red, and a black. Easy peasy. So Rachel said she had a whole slew of 103s. That would be perfect. Just do it. And the, and the, um, the silks you can always buy from hand dyed fibers as well. So she has them. They're listed here and you can just find them. Then the kit also seeing the end of those. Um, the response has been tremendous. And if you want it, I would suggest you do get it. Um, we ship pretty, pretty quickly, pretty regularly, about three times a week. And so we could have those out and to you and you can have them done for Christmas. It's shoop, shoop, just, you know, doesn't take long at all. My husband was gluing these, taping these to the, to the, um, the holder. <laughs> Cause last time, so they tilt back naturally a little bit. So last time I was trying to tilt them forward just a tad and, um, them not being a, you know, they just came right off. This one's sitting awkwardly. Anyway, so it says, Noel, I give you, so the kit looks like this. It really doesn't take long to do. Well, it takes me a little longer than you, but. Um, so it comes in a little craft bag with my little old fashioned Santa stamp. And you get the linen, the, the silk floss, and the pattern, which has a placement page, so you don't have to do the counting. All you do is place your linen on there and you know, look through it, and you can just start stitching your letters. I did a lot of counting, <laughs> both to get the right size and you know, where to put them on the, on the linen. So, and it also comes with a stand, which I'm currently using to display. We are almost finished with these, um, and I just can't tell you how how grateful I am, and just so happy that you guys liked what I what I put out. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that Janet Scott is available as a download as well. Yeah, there it is. And one more time, this is what it looks like in real life. Now remember, they're just kind of glued on there, so they might be a little cattywampus, this one is. <laughs> but you get the idea. Okay. Then, the last thing. I just wanted to show a friend of mine and I agreed last year when all the fun um, advent calendars were going around and, and, you know, we missed out or we didn't. We didn't buy anything. Um, we said, let's do our own. Let's do one for each other. And we sort of set a price limit. I blew that, um, but it doesn't matter. I think she blew it too. <laughs> um, anyway, so it, I just, I could just encourage you to do that. It was so much fun to look for things all year long for this ad advent calendar. And, you know, we weren't limited to just stitchy stuff. It's whatever. I mean, you know, focus on stitchy stuff. But we could take stuff out of our stash, um, you know, with all our little travels. You know, I, I was always looking for stuff for her. And there is quite a variety in my advent calendar for her. Hers came a little while ago. It's in this box. It's heavy. <laughs> so excited. Anyway, so ugh, this is what it looks like. Very, very fun. I'm excited. Um, this will be so much fun. And you can, you know, you got a whole year to get ready. Go do it. Go get your bestie stitchy friend and, or even just your bestie, whatever, and do it. This is, um, like I said, it's just been so much fun to do. There. Can't wait. Thank you, friend. All right. And now we're just going to go to what's in the bag. I'm at 40 minutes. So let me ooh, move it along. So what I did today was I picked my most favorite bags. Not, well, <laughs> I say it and then I immediately back off. Some of my most favorite bags. And we'll see what's in them 
I might not have put, you know, my most favorite project in them. I don't know. We'll find out. This one. God, I love this bag. I love this bag. This is an embroidered piece that, for those of you who have been following me for a while, I pulled out of big trash in Germany. A lot of times when people die or go into the old folks' home, their apartment just gets cleared out or their house and everything gets put on the curb. And so sometimes I would find some needle needlework and yeah, save the stitches for sure. It has a perfectly matched dangly. This comes from Two Charming Chicks. It says Faith on it. So Two Charming Chicks is on Facebook. She's on Instagram, but her, her business runs on Facebook. Chicks, so two, the, the, the word two, charming. And then Chicks is C-I-C-H-I-X. Um, I have an obscene number of her things. I love, I love what she puts out. Uh, my necklace that I'm wearing today is from her. Um, I've got some stitched pieces that I've made into necklaces. Um, yeah, and I always get compliments on these. Um, they're, I think they're really reasonably priced um, and um, go support small business. She does a fabulous job. Anyway, so here's the bag. I think this is Tilda fabric. I'm not sure and this is, I don't know what. But I made it. And in here, oh, we have, oh, sorry again. A variety of Brenda Gervais. Uh, I, I picked this up at Keepsakes. It was, I saw the, the model and I was like, yep, yeah, gotta have it. So this is Grateful, Thankful, Blessed. Oh, it is so, so pretty. Some flosses are in there, but I don't think I have any fabric. It's a Brenda Gervais multifamily housing bag. This one I've loved forever. Heap on the wood. Well, how long is forever? Um, let me see if there's a date. I'll tell you how long is forever. 2014. So 2014 to 2022 is forever. Um, heap on the wood. Whoopee. There we go. So, so, so. And I was trying to get this up during the pandemic. And it was so hard <laughs> finding the bits and bobs. But really sloppy. I need to take a class from the country sampler. Oh, they're kidding up. And so it's not all called for. I just go through my stash and kind of get what I think looks good. Some is called for, some is not. All of it ends up being a little bit of a bird's nest. There we go. Let's give it a little stroking here, a little comb. Come on. There we go. There are the colors. Now I just got to find the perfect linen for it and admire it from a distance. Aww. What is it? You can come up here if you want to. I'll pick you up. She, this is almost a full day that she does. She just cries and carries on until she falls asleep. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nothing. We've tried everything in... In the years, we've had her almost 10 years now. <laughs> She's just a crier. This, oh, I love this one. I was so inspired when I saw Farm Girl, back when Farm Girl was on YouTube, um, and she had done this one. I was like, and she had it in the corner back there somewhere, and I was like, oh yeah, I have to, have to, have to have it. I have to do it, and of course we got, you know, it's all fully kitted, that's that's it. But not, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's fully kitted. So it is heart and hand. Is, I mean, Brenda Gervais and her her color. And so I did find the linen. I have some of the flosses. I don't know if I have all the flosses, but that'll, whoopsie, be determined when I open it up and contemplate uh, stitching it some more. No! She wants to go out. There are there's probably some critters she has her eye on. She wants to go chase three-legged limping away. Oh, yeah. This was Manor at Quaker Hill. I was inspired by um, Nicole's Needlework. She was working on it. A couple of other people were working on it right after market a couple years ago. And I was like, yes, I need to do that one. <laughs> I have such good intentions. Anyways, uh, Manor at Quaker Hill. I think it's 
so beautiful, so beautiful. And I've just put together my own, my own thing on silk though. I sort of fitted it up silk. And there is some sort of picture of this plus linen in here. I'm not gonna pull it out. Well, I can probably, hold on. The tag is bent. It is 40 count fawn, picture of this plus fawn. It's gonna look great on that whenever I get around to it. And, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, sewing Quaker tray. I was so in love with this. I have the, the thing, I think. I'll have to go look, or something similar. Here are the flosses. And of course, oh no, our hearts. Ah, I should stitch that for my husband and my anniversary. We'll be married 35 years in June. Could you stop? She's sitting by the door. Just looking so sad. Our hearts. How long could that take? Longer than I think. I think. Anyways, so pretty. And the last thing in here, yeah, seriously, multifamily housing, um, is something that came out in 2013. Shame. How many? It's, it's almost a decade old. It's in pristine, unstitched condition. This is Forget Me Not. It came out at market in a, as a full kit, I think, or maybe, I don't know if it was a full kit. Let's see here. Chart, yes. Linen and um, the floss. So here's the linen sticking out. And all right, my goodness. Very pretty. And here are all the, it's a beautiful, beautiful sampler. Oh, these poor. All right, I'm gonna have to do a better job storing this stuff. There it is. How pretty is that? It's just a question of time. I need to quit my job. <laughs> That's the only solution I can see. All right, well, this alone took a long time. Maybe we'll call it at this point. It's 47 minutes. I'll do one more. This is another one of my favorite bags. My zipper pull has since left the building somewhere. I'll have to make another. Anyways, these were two fat quarters I bought at the Temecula Quilt Company in 2019 when we were out there for, well, we weren't out there, we were in California, which like Temecula, we were in LA and Temecula is down the road three hours, but we, had, we went to see my mom and Temecula was right there, so. Um, I stopped by when she still had her store. She no longer has and bought four fat quarters, I think. Super restrained for, you know. Anyway, so I made project bags and both of them I love. So this one is one of them. And you can see it's a blackbird. So remember me. Oh no, what is this? Thou sh shall I compare thee to a summer's day? I don't know why I remember me came up. And, ooh. It is what I've kitted up. Let me not show you the, is this one. The, yeah, by the same name, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? It's based on an, a, an antique. Uh, let's see if we can get a, well, I don't need to show you the antique. Anyways, um, but there's also a pin cushion that I'm going to incorporate in that. Somebody did that and I really liked the idea. And so all this is going to be added on. I have kitted it up in hand dyed fibers. And these are all different versions of Vicky's silk. 
she did all kinds of different tags, you know, depending how long you were with it. Then you, some of them are little detritus from detritus bags. Detritus is like the leftover once she's, once she gets everything, um, spooled up or skeined up whichever whatever she was doing at the time then you know there wasn't enough to do a full one and so she would throw it into a baggie and back then you could just get a huge bag for very little money and you could just you know amuse yourself by pulling it all apart and winding it which I just absolutely love to do and so that's where some of this is coming from these are the really old tags but not the oldest ones and then here are the two spools of the reds. There we go. And I think the linen is probably, oh, here's another piece of detritus. Yeah, this is one of the um, Victorian motto linens. She did beautiful linens. Business practice wasn't so great, so. But that doesn't keep me from using it. They don't do linen anymore. All right, that is the end of that. All right, calling it a day. I'm going to, what did I say? Go down there and do those mag magnet buttons. I'm working on charting like crazy. And um, on Thursday, I'm driving up to New York, Pittsford, staying there till Tuesday, driving back. I have one more day off after that, and then it's back to work until Christmas. And this is our busy season, so I'm sure my boss was thrilled for me to <laughs> punch out. I had it on the calendar forever. Well, not forever, but um, probably since we decided we were going to go. No, I already taken the time off prior. Um, so probably since the summer, I've put it on the calendar, and he never said anything, so... Anyways, <laughs> I am checking in every other day on my email anyways, trying to make sure nothing's falling um, or getting forgotten. So and that is that. We'll see you again. Well, we'll see you from Pittsburgh because I have some great friend stitchers that are uh, that we're going to be hanging out with. One of them being Robert Harris, if you don't follow him. His uh, Instagram is a gentleman's sampling. I will put it down below. Um, he, I did an interview with him. If you scroll back through my YouTube, um, two years ago, I think in May or a year and a half ago in May, it was, uh, I did an interview and he talked about the stitching, but, um, I'll see if he'll bring some more unframed pieces. <sighs> he's, he's fantastic. And my other friend, Beth, who is just a stitcher extraordinaire they are her her and her sister Rebecca are coming out with some reproductions for market um, I think they're going under the name my sister's samplers but we'll talk about it when we're in Pittsburgh um, and she stitches beautifully as does Rebecca um, and then I have two more friends that are coming uh, Lisa and Miriam um, both of them also real I mean I am completely outclassed yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, you know, a perfectionist stitcher at all. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, it's just, it's just about stitching. I, I really enjoy stitching. Okay, my friends, that's the update. And we will see you from Pittsford. And until then, you guys stay happy, healthy, and terrific. Love y'all. Bye.